but I, I think it's strange because I, I'm in uh, display mode on my computer, but here it's not. Uh, okay, so I think I share the other screen. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, this is good. Okay. Uh, wait. Okay. Uh, what, what's the okay, I can start. Uh, okay, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Zuedo, and uh, 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 I'm uh, I'm working in the mesoscopic group. Uh, in uh, Laboratory of Associated Physics associated with the uh, University of uh, paris in France. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers to uh, invite me to the talk. And today my topic is uh, super uh, supercurrent noise in a phase fast superconducting normal ring in thermal equilibrium. Uh, so um, when we talk about uh, superconductivity, the first remark that uh, people usually have is uh, that it supports a dissipationless current or supercurrent. Um, and it's interesting to ask uh, whether such uh, uh, dissipationless current is noisy. So indeed, there are uh, several uh, pioneering uh, 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 theoretical works uh, using the uh, superconducting uh, QPC as an example. So here we have uh, two uh, uh, Andreev spectrons. Um, um, and um, the uh, different from the Josephson junction, the, uh, the Andreev level can be tuned by the phase difference between the two uh, superconducting electrodes. And uh, especially when we are close to the phase pi, the two levels can be very close to each other. And therefore, at finite uh, temperature, uh, the Andreev uh, states can, uh, fluctuating, uh, can fluctuate between these two levels, uh, which results in a fluctuating uh, supercurrent. Um, so, uh, so indeed, this uh, the, the, uh, the noise spectrum of this uh, uh, supercurrent noise has uh, a significant uh, uh, magni uh, magnitude, even down to the zero frequency limit. So in this talk, um, I'm going to, uh, we are lo uh, uh, looking at a similar system called the SNS junction. So the SNS junction is formed by uh, two super uh, superconducting bands coupled by a normal uh, metal. So here the supercurrent is supported by many more uh, antifon states. So if we are in the lone diffusive junction limit, then uh, indeed we have a mini gap, uh, which is maximal at phase zero and is closed at phase pi. Um, so uh, different from the uh, superconducting QPC, so if we have a, a lone diffusive junction, the size of the mini gap is actually uh, uh, proportional to one over the length square. So uh, in this case, we can have a regime where the uh, temperature is larger than the mini gap, but still much smaller than the native gap of the superconductor. And therefore, we expect to, uh, uh, to have a, a much larger supercurrent noise, and uh, we have a better opportunity to observe it experimentally, uh, uh, which has not yet been achieved uh, uh, since uh, its uh, prediction long time ago. Uh, so uh, at the same time, from thermodynamics, we have a very generic relation uh, called uh, the fluctuation dissipation theorem, uh, which is valid so long as the system is in uh, thermal uh, equilibrium. So in our case, since we have a very large uh, supercurrent noise, then, uh, uh, then this entails um, uh, a high uh, linear dissipative conductance of the junction. Um, and this seemingly contradicts superconducti uh, superconductivity, uh, whose hallmark is uh, this uh, dissipationless uh, uh, current. Uh, so here, for some of you, uh, the notion of dissipation might be associated with uh, resistance instead of a conductance. But here, I'd like to emphasize that we, for the whole talk, uh, I stick to this uh, parallel circuit model. And here, indeed, the, con uh, uh, um, uh, the conductance G equals zero means no dissipation. Um, so uh, in order to solve this uh, paradoxical um, uh, dissipation uh, rising from the, uh, from, from the supercurrent noise, we need to think uh, a bit more carefully 
uh, about uh, how we define and measure the linear conductance in SNS junction. So uh, uh, this is not actually very straightforward as, uh, for example, in the ohmic conduct, uh, conductor where we can simply just uh, put a little bus and measure the current. Uh, because in a, a SNS junction, the IV curve is highly nonlinear and so long as we put any non-zero voltage bars, we will drive the system out of the uh, uh, superconducting branch and therefore we break the uh, fluctuation dis uh, dissipation theorem. Uh, another possibility is to adopt this uh, uh, phase bounced scheme. So here uh, the essence junction is in the uh, uh, ring geometry and is coupled to a resonator. So, um, so in this case the, the phase is controlled by the uh, DC uh, magnetic flux and on top of that uh, we introduce a small AC flux by the RF signal and also we have a little AC current inside the ring. So here we can define a quantity called uh, uh, the mag uh, magnetic sus uh, susceptibility chi by delta i over delta phi. Uh, delta phi. And, um, and uh, uh, this setup uh, has several uh, advantages. Uh, the first one is that uh, so long as we limit our input signal to be very small, then we can always guarantee that the system is in thermal equilibrium. And the second one that uh, 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 since we are measuring at finite frequency, then we can access to this uh, uh, junction dissipa uh, uh, dissipative uh, conductance. So here for the for chi, uh, in general, it has uh, two components. The in-phase components chi prime corresponds to the uh, Josephson inductance from the supercurrent. Uh, and we also have this outer phase component chi double prime, uh, which corresponds to the dissipative conductance. And uh, physically, this corresponds to the finite time needed for the system to equilibrate or relax to its uh, uh, instantaneous ground states. And now the question is, uh, we want to ask whether this, uh, this uh, linear conductance is the same that uh, uh, implied from the fluctuation dissipation theorem. Uh, and then uh, to experimentally uh, test that, we uh, realized the third advantage of this uh, setup, uh, of this scheme. Uh, uh, um, so here we uh, actually can do uh, both measurements using, uh, 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 both measurement using the same setup. Uh, so for the dissipation measurement, we, uh, uh, we just measure the transmitted uh, RF signal uh, to the input. For the noise measurement, we don't send in any signal and just uh, listen to what's coming out from the resonator. Uh, so uh, here is the uh, structure of my talk. So I have, uh, so since we are going to do a, a quantitative comparison between two sets of measurements, we need to first calibrate the system carefully. And then I'll show the uh, main result that I uh, uh, measure uh, the supercurrent noise and the, uh, this uh, dissipative uh, conductance uh, using the same setup. And then we, for this uh, dissipative conductance, we uh, see there's a, a strong temperature dependence, which is uh, very different from the, what you expect in a, a classical Joule conductance, for example. And to explain that, we uh, uh, use a, a linear response theory. And this interesting uh, review um, a, a, a high current correlation uh, um, that uh, that's corresponds to this uh, temperature dependence. So now we come to the uh, first section. So uh, here is a, a, a picture of the device. So we have a, a, a gold nanowire as the normal metal and uh, uh, the superconducting alloy uh, molybdenum rhenium is deposited for the, for the rest of the device. And here to close the uh, SNS ring, we have a thin line superconductor, uh, which also acts as a, a coupling, capacitance, uh, coupling inductance, ALC. Uh, so the resonator uh, is formed by this uh, meander line and uh, which provides uh, 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 in, uh, the inductance LR and we have uh, uh, large lump components uh, CR uh, which gives us uh, 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 a relatively low resonant frequency around 100 megahertz and we also have uh, intrinsic loss uh, for the resonator which is uh, characterized by this uh, conductance GR. Uh, and uh, we also have a homemade uh, cryogenic amplifier to be directly connected to, uh, to the device. So here, uh, in order to do that without killing the uh, quality factor of the resonator, we 
uh, have uh, uh, designed the, the, the amplifier to have uh, almost infinite input impedance, and therefore we uh, have a gain only around uh, unity. And uh, this amplifier also has uh, uh, also has uh, uh, noises that we need to uh, calibrate uh, 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 experimentally. So to calibrate, we uh, performed uh, the measurements at high temperature and fixed phase. And here, the uh, the SNS ring is just uh, can be considered as a, a phase independent small offset to the resonator parameters. And therefore, we can simplify our analysis, but we still have this uh, uh, circuit quantities to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, characterized. And here, I only show a brief sketch about how I uh, I do uh, I do this. And uh, if you are interested in more technical details, I'm happy to answer that after the talk. So here on on the left uh, is the measured transmission coefficient gamma, and uh, this can be fitted to our circuit model. So here we see on a nice agreement from which we can extract the resonant frequency and the Cauchy factor. And uh, on, the, uh, on the right is the measured, uh, uh, directly measured voltage noise spectrum. And here in order to achieve uh, a very nice, uh, uh, very low uh, data uh, uncertainty, we, we average by a huge amount of uh, 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 spectrum. Um, so, um, uh, so also from the circuit module, we, we can see that uh, this uh, a measured voltage noise has two terms. One is really coming from the thermal fluctuation. The other is coming from, uh, from the uh, noise of the amplifier. Um, so on resonance, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, the voltage noise is simply linear, uh, uh, as a, uh, is a simply a, a linear function to temperature. And indeed, this is uh, what we observe. And uh, from the high temperature data, we can ex uh, extract the the slope, and therefore we can deduce many quantities uh, of the uh, resonator. And um, um, the, uh, to uh, obtain the, uh, the noises uh, for the amplifier, uh, then we need to fit the data to the, uh, to the uh, complete circuit module. So here we treat the uh, amplifier noises as uh, fitting parameters. And uh, to do that, we can, uh, indeed we get uh, all the uh, quantities experimentally. So here, just to give a, a brief idea uh, um, of uh, the relative magnitude, so here is our uh, 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 measured uh, spectrum, and the thermal contribution is relatively 20% of it. Uh, so now uh, we are ready to show the main result. So, um, so here I show two, uh, two spectrums at a fixed temperature, but uh, one at phase zero, the other at uh, phase pi. So, um, um, so again, if we look at this uh, 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 the, uh, expression, uh, what we are really, interest, uh, really interested in is this uh, uh, supercurrent noise, which, uh, which is uh, included in the thermal contribution. But uh, the, the amplifier contribution uh, also depends on, uh, depends on phase. Uh, due to the um, due to the uh, the junction impedance uh, due to the junction uh, uh, emittance, so therefore, how can we extract this uh, supercurrent noise? Uh, so to simplify the analysis, we take a step back. So to uh, so to do that, we consider the whole circuit of the resonator plus the SNS ring, and uh, therefore, uh, as a uh, equi uh, equivalent circuit, uh, we uh, what. Uh, 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 the emittance y tot has uh, uh, phenomenological quantities uh, g tot and l tot, and uh, our strategy here is to first uh, probe the uh, supercurrent noise for the whole circuit, and then work our way, uh, our way back to extract the contribution from the uh, SNS ring. So, as a first step, we want to uh, answer whether uh, this uh, g torch measured by noise is the same as the g torch measured by transmission. So here again, uh, this is the uh, spectrum that uh, uh, directly measured at two different phases. So the uh, procedure uh, uh, we, uh, we use to treat the data is to, for each spectrum, we fit to this complete circuit model. So it looks very complicated, but uh, here uh, we, uh, uh, it's enough to uh, notice that uh, uh, we only have two unknown quantities, which is g tot and l tot. And for the rest of the uh, circuit elements, uh, uh, they, uh, they have been uh, calibrated uh, uh, previously. 
Um, so here is a, uh, an example to the fit. So indeed we see that uh, 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 our model is highly accurate even if we zoom in just around the, uh, the resonant frequency. And uh, uh, especially our model is uh, uh, way uh, um, uh, uh, precise um, to, uh, to resolve two important uh, cases. So the first one is uh, uh, we indeed have an intrinsic uh, uh, dissipative conductance coming from the uh, SNS ring, um, which is the, what we expect from, from, from theory. Uh, the other is that we don't actually we uh, don't have any uh, dissipative conductance from the ring, but the observed phase modulation is due to the uh, due to the phase dependent Josephson inductance. So here is uh, corresponds to the first case. So indeed, we see there is a almost perfect agreement between the fit and the uh, data. Um, and uh, if we replace the G-torch with uh, uh, with just a resonator. Uh, 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 dissipation contribution, GR, then we see that the fit can never uh, work su uh, successfully. Uh, and indeed, the difference between the fit and the data is the noise, uh, voltage noise coming from the SNS ring. Um, so if I repeat this fit for all temperatures and phases, then, uh, then I got this uh, uh, 1 over L tot and uh, G uh, tot, as of, uh, which I uh, a plot here. So both quantities have strong phase dependence uh, and uh, also uh, uh, we have a high precision in, uh, in, uh, in measuring these quantities. So now we have completed half of the task and uh, for the next half we need to uh, send in uh, finite uh, RF power and measure transmission. So just uh, as a brief recap, uh, uh, as I introduced before, the um, the, the uh, SNS ring can be characterized by a, a linear susceptibility chi, uh, which is directly proportional to the junction uh, admittance. So um, the, the in-phase component chi prime is rela uh, di directly related to the uh, Josephson uh, inductance, and the uh, outer phase chi double prime is related to the dis dissipative uh, conductance. So again, uh, if we measure the transmission uh, coefficient of the system, uh, this uh, um, uh, g tot and l tot of the total circuit uh, uh, can be directly measured by the uh, resonant frequency and the uh, court effector of the uh, tr uh, of the transmission coefficient. So, uh, uh, if we transform uh, uh, what we directly measured uh, uh, into the, uh, the the two quantities, one over l tot and g tot, then we indeed have. Uh, uh, this result, and this can be directly compared uh, with the noise measurement. So indeed, we see here uh, we achieve a, a, a quantitative agreement between two independent set of data, and uh, this comparison is uh, even more. This agreement is uh, even more remarkable if we uh, look at the expression. So here, um, uh, only one quantity, which is L R, enters into this. Uh, 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 comparison and this LR has already been uh, experimentally calibrated. So this means that we indeed have an intrinsic dissipative uh, uh, conductance G tot, uh, which uh, which remains the same and linear even when the input power is reduced down to the noise limited level. So then, if the uh, uh, if the thermodynamics uh, uh, is correct, then we, uh, indeed we should be able to have a supercurrent noise. So then I will show you how I extract the supercurrent noise from, uh, from the measured voltage noise. So uh, in order to see that, we have to open this black box of a uh, 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 resonator plus the ring. So here the, uh, the G tot uh, is a sum between a, a constant uh, contribution GR coming from the resonator plus a small flux modulation. And uh, uh, this one is directly proportional to the uh, conductance of the SNS ring. And this pro uh, proportionality, uh, um, uh, which, uh, which is the coupling coefficient, uh, is a, a small quantity. And the same is applied for the, uh, no uh, for the noise. So, uh, um, so here we also have this uh, uh, coupling coefficient kappa here, which means that the uh, uh, supercurrent noise uh, reflects into the measured voltage noise, uh, but with a magnitude 
chi times smaller. So this is indeed uh, 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 the challenge of this measurement. So if we do this uh, 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 data processing, um, then we uh, uh, realize the phase variation of this uh, uh, supercurrent noise start to be comparable with the uh, data uncertainty of our measurement. So to further improve that, we realize that we actually take the measurement for, uh, for, for um, many frequency points. And therefore, if we average uh, like uh, several hundred uh, of frequency points uh, near resonance, we can further improve the precision. And the mean value actually shows a nice uh, phase dependence. And this one uh, is, uh, has, uh, also has a quantitative agreement uh, expected from the fluctuation dissipation theorem. So indeed, we are able to measure, uh, measure uh, uh, supercurrent noise uh, with a precision on the order of uh, 10 femto ampere square per hertz. And also, we experimentally confirm uh, the uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem uh, in this uh, for SNS ring. Um, so now we can dig a bit uh, uh, deeper to see the uh, physical significance of this uh, uh, dissipative uh, conductance G, uh, which uh, has a strong temperature dependence. So, uh, so here, indeed, we see that uh, uh, the uh, this conductance uh, uh, depends on temperature a lot, and especially uh, this uh, conductance is enhanced uh, at lower temperature. Um, so this is uh, 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 different from what you expect for a classical uh, jute conductance uh, in the millikelvin range. And uh, actually, this, uh, uh, um, uh, this temperature dependence has, uh, uh, has been uh, reported in several earlier uh, works, and they have uh, uh, some uh, like uh, 1 over T dependence uh, in the conductance. So to, uh, um, to uh, understand that better, uh, we need to convert um, and to be, uh, be compared with a theory that I will describe later. Then we need to convert from what we measure, which is a SNS ring, into the uh, uh, SNS junction. So uh, here, um, here I, uh, I like to uh, uh, remind that uh, the uh, the uh, susceptibility of the ring is directly proportional to the uh, to G tot. So in the uh, later of the talk, I will talk in the language of uh, this uh, uh, chi ring. So uh, if we do the circuit analysis, the uh, the the chi ring and the chi junction uh, are related by this simple relation. And here we have a. Uh, uh, um, uh, this quantity, beta, which is the uh, screening coefficient, uh, which is due to the uh, supercurrent circulating in the loop. So indeed, if uh, beta is uh, much smaller than one, we have uh, uh, the chi ring almost equal to uh, chi junction. But in our case, this quantity is not so small. And we know that uh, um, if we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, not so small screening factor uh, uh, coefficient beta, uh, we can have a, a, a large uh, phase dependence in the measured chi ring, even if the chi junction uh, is phase independent. So, uh, so if we revert um, our measured data into the, uh, to expose the junction uh, uh, chi double prime, uh, as what we see here in the solid line, indeed we have a much weaker uh, phase, uh, phase dependence. Uh, and here I like to emphasize that um, uh, this screening effect is uh, not a, a measurement artifact, but actually it helps us to identify this uh, uh, phase independent contribution coming from the SNS junction, which is otherwise hard to be disentangled from the uh, phase independent constant uh, coming from the uh, resonator. So if we plot this uh, junction uh, uh, conductance as a function of temperature, uh, indeed we also have this uh, 1 over T dependence. And uh, then to explain that, we uh, use the linear response theory. And here as a, a preview to our conclusion, we say this uh, 1 over t dependence of uh, G uh, actually is a manifestation of an enhanced current correlation uh, near the Fermi level. Uh, uh, and this is due to the proximity effect. So uh, the, um, the linear, uh, so the linear res uh, uh, in the linear response theory, uh, so we um, have uh, uh, the AC flux introduce this uh, linear per perturbation to the uh, 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 both the gens uh, Hamiltonian, and uh, the uh, finite uh, relaxation rate gamma is uh, uh, included in this uh, 
um, uh, in this model by the master equation. And therefore, we can calculate the linear junction. And here is the, uh, here is the equations. So the, uh, so the uh, junction conductance uh, has two components, uh, the diagonal one and the non-diagonal one, which corresponds to the diagonal uh, 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 and non-diagonal matrix elements of the current operator. So physically, the diagonal term corresponds to the, um, to the, uh, uh, the time, uh, finite time needed for the system to equi uh, uh, equilibrate to its uh, instantaneous uh, 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 states. And uh, it's always zero at phase zero and phase pi. Uh, for the non-diagonal term, it corresponds to uh, the excitation relaxation between two levels due to either the microwave or the thermal fluctuation. Um, so to uh, 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 numeric uh, numerically compute that, we discretize this Hamiltonian by tight binding model. And uh, if we diagonalize it, we can get the, the Andreev levels and also all the uh, 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 current matrix elements. So we first uh, use this way to explain the weak phase dependence of G. So here we uh, have computed uh, the, the Andreev uh, spectrum uh, and here uh, we see this uh, for a long diffusive junction, we have this uh, mini gap. And experimentally, uh, our temperature is slightly larger than the, uh, than the mini gap of our, uh, of our system. And uh, uh, indeed, uh, if we compute uh, the, the junction, uh, 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 junction uh, conductance, then we see that uh, the, the phase variation of the diagonal and the non-diagonal term cancels each other. And then indeed we're le uh, left with a, a much weak phase dependence. And physically this can be understood that at high temperature, uh, since we basically act activate uh, almost all the elements of the current operator and the G can be, uh, uh, can be approximated by the trace of uh, G square and therefore, and this guy is independent, phase independent, sorry. And uh, then we can uh, explain this uh, 1 over t uh, temperature dependence of G. So um, uh, here, since our uh, conductance is almost phase independent, then we can focus on two special cases. Uh, uh, one is phase zero, the other is phase pi. And at these two points, the diagonal contribution is always zero. So we can only consider the non-diagonal contribution. So if we uh, transform this uh, uh, equation into the continuous spectrum limit, then the uh, entry level becomes the uh, density of states and the matrix element of the current uh, operator becomes this uh, current correlation function. Um, so uh, for our unproximatized metal, then both terms, uh, both uh, quantities are constant and therefore we have a, a, a temperature independent uh, conductance uh, and uh, this is actually corresponds to the jute conductance in the, uh, in the classical metal. So here we realize that uh, in order to have a strong temperature dependence, uh, we should either, uh, we should have a high energy dependence uh, either in the density states or in the current correlation. So this is naturally satisfied at phase zero since at phase zero we have a, a mini gap and uh, the, the density states decrease around Fermi level. Uh, and uh, uh, so this uh, uh, is uh, nothing quite special. But um, uh, it's more uh, uh, puzzling uh, for the case at phase pi. So here at phase pi, the mean gap closes. Uh, and indeed, if we look at the density of states, it's almost constant. So naively, we would expect that this is a behave more or less just like a classical uh, uh, unproximatized normal metal. However, uh, if uh, we uh, look at the map of the uh, current cor uh, correlator, then we see a strong energy variation uh, uh, when the en energy level is uh, uh, smaller than the, uh, uh, the, the superconductor gap. So here the uh, x-axis is the uh, energy difference uh, between two levels and uh, y-axis is the energy. So if we do a line cut here, which corresponds to the uh, this term in the equation, then indeed we see a strong uh, energy variation. So here we have uh, 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 several structures, uh, uh, features. So for this uh, quasi-periodic uh, peaks, uh, this corresponds to the uh, ballistic Thales energy in the system. And uh, in our case, this, uh, uh, the temp uh, experimentally, this uh, uh, temperature scale is uh, uh, 
uh, beyond 10K. So this, uh, these peaks are not uh, relevant uh, in our discussion. Uh, however, at the same time, we have uh, a, a high peak uh, at a uh, Fermi level, at a zero energy, um, which is broadened by the inelastic uh, scattering rate, gamma. Um, and um, so this means that we have a high cur uh, current correlation near Fermi level, uh, even if the, the gap is zero. So if we introduce this, uh, 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 this uh, peak into the equation, then uh, after this uh, uh, calculation, we uh, can see that this gives us uh, this uh, one over T uh, temperature dependence. Uh, and here I'd like to emphasize that uh, 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 this uh, uh, enhanced correlation uh, is not present if we do the uh, calculation in an unproximatized metal. So here is my conclusion. So in this work, we indeed uh, demonstrate there is a, a linear dissipative uh, conductance for the SNS junction, even, uh, um, and uh, we also uh, uh, managed to measure experimentally the supercurrent noise coming from this, uh, uh, associated with this uh, conductance, and we uh, uh, test, uh, we validate the fluctuation dissipation theorem uh, in this system. And we also uh, identify uh, uh, 1 over t uh, temperature dependence of the conductance. And uh, this is a manifestation uh, of uh, enhanced current correlation due to the proximity effect. And uh, here I'd like to thank uh, all my colleagues uh, in the meso group, especially the PhD student uh, Xavier Ballu and uh, my supervisor uh, Mathieu Ferrier and uh, Hélène Bouchia, and also my co uh, uh, collaborators uh, uh, in situ and to provide us with uh, this uh, uh, cryogenic amplifier. So, thank you. Thanks for me also. More questions? Thank you for a beautiful and very clear talk. A remarkably uh, clean and nice results. Thank you. So I wanted to ask, uh, there, there have been a few attempts over the year to make uh, an SNS uh, qubit, mm -hmm. uh, where the junction is a uh, normal metal. And, and people were aware of this, uh, the Andreev uh, scenarios, and, and tried to bias the qubit away from the gap. But still, it never worked. Uh, they were always very dissipation uh, limited. So do you think your considerations are relevant for, for these different scenarios? Can you sort of outline what would make a, a qubit possible with the, an SNS junction? Uh, okay, so I'm not really in the qubit community. So uh, just uh, from my background, I, I, my understanding for this, uh, uh, what you are saying is this called Andrew qubit. And I think here you uh, need to limit uh, your level to be really, to have uh, only two level. But if you have a SNS junction, then you have a, a like huge number of levels, and uh, I'm wondering whether you can really operate the qubit in that way. But uh, I think that uh, goes to the um, the first example that I introduced uh, here, where you have um, uh, a superconducting QPC, and therefore you can only have uh, like a, a very small number of channels. And here I think. Um, uh, w uh, the thermal noise that what I'm talking about might not be very important because uh, 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 you know this uh, uh, to have thermal noise we need to have the temperature scale to be comparable with the smallest gap in the system and if you have a little uh, uh, imperfect uh, uh, transmission then then this gap might be large and you can actually use the uh, high frequency to operate your system without uh, without uh, this uh, th thermal fluctuation problem. Yeah. That's my understanding. No, no, there, there were real attempts uh, to, to make it out of nanowires, a, a, a model metal. Yes. Uh -huh. not, not Andrei, uh, multi Yeah, uh, and I guess in this case, maybe you need to tune the Fermi level of the nanowire to be like in close to like a deple uh, depletion region where you can only have a few moles in the system. Okay, hi, uh, thank you. I was wondering, uh, have you tried uh, maybe driving and measuring the noise just to see if you can do, like, um, excite some levels and then you know, create a non-thermal 
non-equilibrium situation where you can maybe even see the decision yeah, this is a decrease? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Actually, we have another related work that we measure the, uh, this uh, uh, linear dissipation by putting a pump. And we indeed, we see a, a enhanced, um, so here I can maybe show you. Uh, it's another paper? It's another paper, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's not here. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, so what basically what we measure is not the noise, just this. And uh, here without the pump, we see the dissipation is uh, slow. Uh, it's low at uh, phase zero because we have a largest gap. But if you add in a, 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 a pump, then you can see this guy goes up. So to, to, then you can, yeah, you introduce more excitation by the pump. And uh, this actually we, uh, it's not really the object of, uh, of this uh, measurement, but we, uh, this is something that we can measure. But I think um, we need to still improve the precision of the data because uh, in the end, it's, uh, uh, we, are, uh, even, uh, we are almost at the limit even to resolve this. But if you have a pump, then you have an even smaller, uh, smaller signal. So, yeah, so that's uh, in uh, the systems in which you have very few channels, yes. like uh, superconducting atomic contacts or nanowire junctions, there is yeah. supercurrent noise due to quasi-particle poisoning. Mm -hmm. So how is it that you can neglect that here? Uh, so this I'm uh, not very familiar and uh, uh, I think in terms of uh, experiment, we have we can detect in the same way. We just uh, because experimentally, I just uh, get all my uh, noise, and uh, the end is how we extract. So that depends on the physics. So I think for to answer your question, I'm not really familiar with this quasi-particle uh, noise, but uh, maybe I think uh, we can so extract all the other like uh, uh, no noise contribution from the amplifier, from the other thing, and then we can check in the end what we are left and compare with the th uh, theory. But uh, experimentally, this can be, I think this, uh, we can use the same technique to do that. If the signal, uh, if the signal is large enough. Uh, 